Hi there, Dave here. Today I'm going to be building a gaming PC and the parts I'm going to be using is the Corsair 230T case with 16 gigabytes of memory running at 1600 megahertz. This is a Corsair Vengeance memory and we have a solid state drive, 480 gigabytes and a two terabyte hard disk drive as well. And the processor is a Core i7 uh, by Intel. It's the 4790K, so it's unlocked processor running at four gigahertz and 4.4 gigahertz turbo speed. And we have 650 watt power supply by Cooler Master, an Asus motherboard, Maximus 7 Ranger, and the graphics card is GTX 970 by MSI. And we have DVD writer drive as well. And to call the processor, we're going to use the Corsair H80i GT. Okay, so let's take the side panel off of this case. This just has one thumb screw at the side, so no need to have a screwdriver for this one. Let's take the screw out. Now, unusually, this one slides forward to take the side panel off. So let's just put that down there. Right. At the back of the case, we have a 120 millimeter fan. And at the front, we've got two 120 millimeter fans. They're actually LED fans that light up red and have a, a manual here as well and the case screws just in this box here and here we've got space for the motherboard dvd drives uh, solid uh, solid state drives here hard disk drives here the 3.5 inch and all the cables for the front panel connectors and on the front we've got power on off switch, reset switch, uh, audio ports and two 3.0 USB ports. Okay so let's put in the DVD drive first. Okay so first we take this top bracket out, just push, push on the side, either side to take this bracket out and take the DVD drive, make sure it's the right way up and slide it part the way in. Now if I turn this to the side you can see this bracket here you can just hold the bracket out, slide the DVD drive in and this bracket just clicks into place to hold it into place. Now you can use screws on this as well but this bracket will hold it nicely into place. Okay, so now we can put the hard drives in. I have this three and a half inch hard disk drive and a solid state drive as well. So let's put the three and a half inch hard drive in first. Now we want these SATA connections that's at the back of the hard disk drive to face this side of the case, the back side, if you like, of the case. So. Let's put it that way and just slide the hard drive into this top bracket here. And if I pull this clip out just here, and then we can slide it in and it should click into place. That's it. And the solid state drive, we need these SATA connections to be facing the back of the case. So we can slide that in just here. Just put that in. And that's that drive clicked into place. So I've just put the computer case on its side so that I can put in this I.O. plate this plate came with the motherboard and we can just slide it into the black hole 
at the back of the case and click it into place just by giving it a push. Okay, so I've taken the motherboard out of its box and just laid it on some plain white paper on a table and I've taken the processor out of its main box. It's just inside this plastic casing right now. Now if I just push this arm down and out slightly and then let the arm spring up and pull this bit up too. Now we can put the processor in. So I'll just take it out of this plastic box. Now on the edge of the processor, hopefully you can see there's two notches on either side just here. And these line up with two notches on the motherboard. So we just line them up and slot in the processor. Just give it a little tap, not too hard, just to make sure it's falling into place. And you can put this lid down, make sure this metal piece goes under this screw here as you're putting it back and just push the arm down and as you can see this plastic bit just pops off. So next we put the memory in these slots here. Now if we open up these tabs on the red slots and take this memory stick, make sure you line up the notches here and here and just line that up and slide it into place and slide that in and push the memory down and you'll see this clicks up into place on its own and let's take the second one again lining up the two notches just slide that into place, push it down, let's leave that tab open, push it down and that's it clicked into place as well. Now just before I put the motherboard into the case I'm going to take this back fan out from the back of the case. We need this fan out because we're going to have that water cooled CPU cooler just here. So I'll just take out all the screws and take this fan out of the case. Okay, so now I've taken the fan out of the back of the case, I can put the motherboard down here and the motherboard will sit on these standoffs here in the case. And this standoff will actually stick through the motherboard. So this is the only one that the motherboard won't sit on. And we need to line the ports on the back of the motherboard with this IO plate here. So I'll show you the ports that I mean on the motherboard now. Let's take a look at these. These are the ports I'm talking about on the motherboard. Just line them up with the I.O. plate and also line up the screw holes that's on the motherboard with the standoffs as well. So now we've got the motherboard down we can put in these screws that came with the case. Just put a screw in each screw hole where there's a standoff and screw it down into place. Now if you just half screw in these screws at first and get them all in and then once they're all in and half screwed in then you can tighten them up a bit. So now I've put all of these screws in and they're just 
half screwed in. So I'm just going to go ahead and tighten each one of them up. So these are all the parts for the Corsair 80i GT liquid cooler for the CPU. So this is what we're going to use next. So let's take the back panel off. This back panel also just has one thumb screw to take out. So it's pretty easy to take out. And again, it slides forward, unlike most cases that slide backwards. Let's move it out of the way. So this is the back plate that came with the Corsair ATI GT cooler. And you can probably just see that these parts move back and forward. Now for this computer, we need to push all of these in and then it goes into these screw holes just here on the back of the motherboard. So just pop that in there, just line it up and push it on. So now at the front of the motherboard, you can see the back plate sticking through these four holes and we're going to use these and we're going to screw them into each of these four corners where the back plate's sticking through the motherboard. So I'll just screw that on, make it reasonably tight and do the same with the other three. So once you've got the four standoffs in, we can now put the first fan on the radiator. So now we can put this fan onto this side of the radiator where the tubes are. Now you can notice that this sticker looks different to this sticker. Now you want this sticker to be this side of the radiator. So take the screws with a washer on the screw as well and screw the first one in into the screw hole on the radiator get that in the hole and do the same with all, all four screws to get this screwed onto the radiator on this side. So now I've got all four screws on the fan for this side of the radiator and now we can put this part onto the processor. So first take off the plastic cover and as you can see we already have thermal paste on here so we don't need to apply any thermal paste and let's put it this way around with the tubes on the right and put these over these standoffs that's already on the case. Let's just plug that in now. It. And now we can use these screws here to screw it down onto the processor. Now I've got the four thumb screws in here to hold this in place over the processor, but just before we carry on with this, I've just noticed that this power supply has some connectors that need to be plugged up here on the motherboard. So before we install this on the side of the case, I'm going to put the power supply in with the fan facing 
downwards in the case. So I'll slide that in there. And slide it over to the to my left. And just going to take the CPU cable and run it through the hole in the motherboard so it runs around the back of the motherboard and then out through a hole in the top. So we're just going to thread the CPU connector, power connector through the top of the motherboard and these clips need to go at the top of this connector here. So just pull it through a bit more. You can do these one at a time, it makes it a bit easier. So just thread that through there, plug it in, and it's clicked into place. Then take the second one and plug that in as well. That's it, and they've both clicked into place. Now we've got the power supply lined up with the screw holes in the case. The power supply came with a bag of four screws which we can use. And just tip those out and use these screw holes here to screw the power supply into, into place. So now we need to put this radiator and fan this way around and the second fan needs to go on the side of the case and with this sticker facing this side as you can see again like I said before the stickers are different we have this sticker facing this side then take one of the screws with a washer on as well, put it into the back of the case and through the corner of the fan. Let's get that lined up. Next you need to put the radiator just here onto the fan and screw the screw through the fan and the radiator. Now there's four screws at the back of the case so screw in all four screws and that's that secured. So now we have the radiator and a fan either side and that's screwed in by four screws at the back of the case. Now we have these cables that lead from both fans lead into these connectors and these need to be plugged in to these connectors that lead from this block. So let's take the first connector from one of the fans and plug it into this one here. Just slide that in. Then take connector from the other fan and plug it into this port here. And I'll show you this way around. Just plug them in like so and that's those two done. Now this connector here is connected to this CPU block just behind it and 
this side of the connector needs to go facing the bottom and it's going to be plugged into this port just here where it says CPU fan. So I'll plug that in and it plugs into the first three pins leaving the pin on the right exposed. So these fans I just showed you uh, connecting them up for the water cooler what I've actually done is I disconnected them from the front and then threaded them through the back of the case and then reconnected them. That way it looks a bit tidier at the front of the case and these will just go flat like that and then we'll eventually put the back side panel back on. Next we can put in the graphics card. Now this will be going in this way around just in the top red slot there. Now first of all we need to take out two of the side brackets here so that we can fit the graphics card in. So let's unscrew this top one first. Take out the bracket and the same again with the next one down. So now the graphics card has this label on the top so we want to take that label off. So I'll just remove that and also it has this cover on here so we want to take that off and the ports at the back of the graphics card also has covers so we need to take off the appropriate one whichever's the appropriate one for you for your monitor perhaps the DVI-D port or perhaps the DVI-I port there. Okay so we've taken the stickers off and the covers now we can install the graphics card into this red slot here. So let's just slot that in clicks into place and now we can just screw it to the side of the case to secure it. Okay so now we've got the graphics card in we can put in the front panel connectors so these ports on the front of the case such as the on off switch and the USB ports those all have a cable leading to here these cables are all tied up so I'll just untie them so these are the cables that I'm talking about just try and carefully pull them forward so that you can see them. So all of the cables lead from the front ports to these connectors here and most of these cables, particularly these ones, will need to be plugged in down here on the motherboard and this is for to connect up the front USB ports this connects up both the two USB ports it needs to be plugged in just here and then we have for the audio ports on the front we have this one which needs to be plugged in down here on the motherboard so let's get a close-up of that so here's the USB 3 connector and here's the USB 3 port and 
this part, this part just here, needs to be plugged in this side where there's a gap just here in the plastic. So if we turn this around, plug it in the right way round into the motherboard, just line it up and plug it in. So this thing here that I'm holding is called a Q connector. This came with the motherboard and this makes it easier to plug in the front panel connectors. So for example this one here is the hard disk drive LED light uh, connector and we have a little plus and minus sign just here and how you can tell which side is which on the connector it's just on the back there's an arrow and that arrow shows that the arrow side is the positive side, the plus side. So that needs to go this side on the Q connector. So we plug it in positive to positive and negative to negative. So we just plug that on like so. And we can do the same with the other front panel connectors. So that's these front panel connectors plugged into the Q connector. And now we can plug this straight onto the motherboard. So if we line up these holes with the pins just here on the motherboard, as you can see, they're lined up now. So we can plug that straight into the motherboard as it is. So as I mentioned before, this is the port just here where we're going to plug the sound cable in. This is for the front audio ports on the front of the case. So now we can plug this into that port there. And notice just here on this connector, there's a blocked hole. And that needs to line up with the missing pin on the motherboard. So just line those two up and plug it straight in. Now with this sound cable that I've just plugged in, I've managed to feed it through this hole just in the back of the case, which makes the cable look a bit tidier. And you can also do this with other cables to make the front of your computer look a bit less cluttered with all the cables. So next we can plug in the power supplies power connectors such as this one that's connected to the power supply. This is a 24 pin power connector to power up the motherboard which will be plugged in just here. So first off I'm going to feed it through the back of the case, keep the cables a bit tidier. And once it's through there, I can pull it through this hole just here and plug it into there. Now this, you can see it has four separate pins just here and that needs to be held in like so as you're plugging it into this port. Now this clip just here needs to be clipped onto this side of the port just here. So let's plug that in. So next we're putting these PCI Express connectors. Uh, we have two 8-pin PCI Express connectors here attached on the same cable and this graphics card needs an 8-pin and a 6-pin PCI Express connector plugged into it. So we plug these in, we thread these through the back of the case just here again to make it look a bit 
tidier in the case. So just carefully thread them in and then bring them out again just through here in the case. And then we can plug these in to the graphics card just here. So now we plug this 8 pin PCI Express connector with its clip onto the top here on the graphics card on this piece of plastic that's just sticking up. So we keep it as 8 pin, plug that straight in and it should clip into place. like so. Now we have a six pin one again with the clip at the top should clip onto this piece just here. So let's turn that around and plug it in. So next we're plugging this cable to give any SATA devices power. This cable came with a power supply now we need this clip to go into this hole and these to go into these line of holes, the ports. So just plug that in like so into the power supply. And we're also plugging the other SATA cable into the back of the power supply as well. So just slot that in. So now we are thread the first cable through the back of the case to give power to this hard disk drive. So just thread, thread that through. And now at the back of the case we can plug in this SATA power connector just here onto the back of the hard disk drive. So now using the same cable we can plug this back through the case and use it again for the other hard drive, the solid state drive. So I'll just thread that through there. And now we can plug the end connector into the solid state drive to give that power. So now using this cable that's plugged into the power supply, let's thread that through the back of the case again, just as we did with the other one. thread the cable back through the case and plug it into just here on the DVD drive making sure it's the right way up and just slot it straight in. So next we're plugging the SATA data cables so let's plug this one in into the solid state drive and plug it through here through the case and out back through here and then we can plug it into the motherboard into one of these red SATA slots just here So now we use a second SATA cable and just plug it into the back of the hard disk drive and then we'll thread this cable through the case and then we can plug that into one of the red SATA ports here on the motherboard. And let's plug the third SATA data cable into this port just here on the DVD drive and 
we'll thread it through the back of the case and out through to the front again and just thread it through this hole here and out through here and into the red SATA port So here we have two cables for the fans at the front of the case. So we just untie them. They need to be plugged into the motherboard so we can feed those through the case in a moment once these are untied. So we can stretch this cable out and feed it through the motherboard, uh, through the case so that we can Plug that into the motherboard in a moment and the same, let's do the same with this one, just untie it from the cable tie. And again feed it through the case so that we can plug this into the motherboard. So now we can plug this one just here and we plug it into the first three pins out of these four pins on the port. Now out of the two case fans, it doesn't matter which one you plug into here or the other port, just as long as it's plugged into a port on the motherboard that says chassis fan. So now we can plug in second case fan connector just here on the motherboard. Exactly the same as we just did with the other one. So let's plug that in now. So now we've got all of the cables in, all of the uh, power supply cables are plugged in, data cables for the solid state drive, hard disk drive, the DVD drive, everything's all in uh, and the cables at the front look quite neat and tidy as it should but at the back of the case it's a little bit of a mess as you can see but it doesn't matter too much how it looks at the back of the case because we'll be putting the back panel on and you won't be able to see all of these cables. Now we can tidy these cables up a little bit using a cable tie to bunch them together. You could use a couple of these cable ties that came with the case. As you can see I've used a couple of cable ties just to make it a bit tidier at the back and then we can just put the back panel back on and let's just slide it on here. And now we've got the back panel on, just screw it into place. Now I'd just like to say that I have an ebook out on how to build a gaming PC now I'll put a link in the description below and a link just here to this book. So now everything's done, we can put the last side panel back on. A good way of doing this is to hold the panel in the middle in case any cables are pushing it out. So hold it in the middle, push it in and slide it back. And now we have the final screw to put in and the only thing left to do now is this window has a slight film on it to protect it. So we'll take that off. 
Okay, and that's this computer complete. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.